Mike Demerges here for the Fantasy Sports Network with the great yeah. former Met Mookie Wilson. Oh, Mookie, great. it's an honor uh, to, to see you work with the kids today and have, have a conversation with you right now. <laughs> uh, what's it like to work with the young kids here? Well, first of all, it's rarely am I described as being great, but I'll take it this day. Uh, I had a ball. I, I, I love teaching the game, and I love teaching kids. I, I think it's, it's just amazing. Something special about watching kids on the baseball field. And it's part of my goal is to, when I teach, is to make sure that they learn things that's going to help them. Um, because every kid's not going to make the big leagues, but every kid can enjoy the game, and that's my goal. And it's sponsored by A-Game Sports a Baseball yeah. Camp and, and, and Softball a Fast yeah. Pitch. Uh, one of the concerns in baseball is that baseball isn't reaching the younger kids. Yeah. Uh, do you agree with that? I think that they're reaching them. It's just that there's certain areas, you know, um, select areas that baseball's really focused on. And uh, we are missing out on a lot of kids that can play. I've had this complaint for years right now, so it's nothing new to me. Um, but it's no real solution. Um, I, I think that there's so many other things available for kids. You know, you have soccer that's growing, and kids are really being able to, to play that at a much more, um, you know, organized level. Um, and, of course, you have the indoor sports, which is the video. Everybody plays that. And um, it's some competition there. So um, baseball has its job cut out for them, and um, let's see how they're going to address it. Now let's go to your, your former team, the New York Mets. Okay. Uh, 2015, a young team, some great yeah. pitching. But you were part of the Mets when they were re rebuilding in the yes. early 80s mm -hmm. before they finally won the World Series in 1986. Yeah. Talk about the development and the young players coming at the time, Wally Backman, Dwight Gooden, Daryl Strawberry. It was a slow process getting yeah. to 1986. Well, I see a lot of similarities. Um, the, the one difference is uh, this 15 club has better starting pitching originally when we first started back in the, in the early 80s. We had a couple of guys, but we were mostly, mostly offense, and we kind of did it the other way around. Um, guys like, you know, Strawberry and, and the Wallet Backmans, you know, and, and Dwight Gooden, you know, and Kevin Mitchell and those guys start coming along. Um, and it added most in addition to myself and Hubie Brooks, you know, whom I love. And, um, you were lead off, he was number two. Yeah, he, that's my, my role. We were role mates like that for years. And um, But this year, uh, this club is going in the right direction, I think, finally. I think they have a direction that people can see. And um, I want to think now is um, what do we do for offense? And I think that's around the corner. I think that people hear the word patience all the time. Mm -hmm. Trust me, that's what it takes in this game is patience. You have to be persistent and, and trust the, the, your, the direction that you're going to go. During 1983, there was a lot of buzz about Strawberry coming up and Gooden. Yeah. Talk about and reflect back on the time when Gooden came up and just watching him pitch. He had that Uncle Charlie curveball, the fastball that just yeah. lit lit up the stadium. I mean, Shea Stadium was electrifying back then. Well, it, it was special. It was a special place. We always said it was a dump, but it was our dump. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> uh, but um, Gooden, um, it was an event watch this kid pitch and um, you know I was, I was a few years older and I was in the leagues a couple years before him and I was you know just amazed the maturity that this kid showed on the mound he was fantastic and I think that opposing players were intimidated by that um, and I think that's kind of what you see a lot in a lot of guys we have now but uh, it was a special time of the year I mean we talking to probably the best athletes never played this game in Strawberry and good. I mean, and they showed it on the mound. They're terrific ball players. You're amazed at some of his <laughs> athletic talent. You know, I, I say before, talent-wise, he was probably the best player that I ever played beside. I mean, he was just phenomenal, and I was always, you know, just watching him. I was really envious of him because I wish I had that body. You know, it was unbelievable. Um, this kid was Whatever he did was, you never thought it was enough. You always knew that was more in him, which was unfair, but... You know, nobody told him to be that gifted. <laughs> well, a lot of the comparison back then when they were comparing Daryl to Willie Mays at the time as oh. well. Yeah, I, know, I did get, get, didn't get a chance to see Willie Mays play at an early age. I saw him at the end of his career. Um, but just looking back, um, I could see how that could be. I mean, straw had it all. He was speed, power, you know, good defense player, could, had a great arm. You know, and, um, you know, like I said, I saw Willie Mays at the end of his career, so I didn't see all of that in one package, but I got to see the strawberry and if Willie was anything like that, man, I, I could imagine what he was. So the 2015 Mets had the great pitching. A lot of fans are clamoring for a bat. Back in 1983, yeah. the Mets brought over Keith Hernandez. Well, you know, that's what I'm saying. We're kind of in the same situation, and we are looking for offense now, and we brought in Keith Hernandez, and later on we brought in, you know, Gary Carter. You know, we made a couple of other moves before that. We brought in George Foster. We brought Kate Dave Kamen back, and those guys didn't quite solve the problem. And um, we're at crossroads again. The question now is, what are we going to do? You know, so let's see what happens. 
Uh, speaking of what we're going to do, Major League Baseball <laughs> has the issue with uh, Pete Rose, whether to or not let him in the Hall of Fame. And you were talking to the kids out yeah. here on, on this camp sponsored by A-Game Sports that Pete Rose did not have all the talent in the yeah. world, that you didn't need that. He wasn't the fastest, yeah. didn't have the most power. Uh, what are your thoughts on Pete Rose? I mean, you, you had to be the ultimate competitor being, you know, nicknamed Charlie Hustle. Well, you know, I, and I have people, I have to tell people before they ask me a question about Pete Rose, understand that I'm a fan of Pete Rose. I, I love the guy. I love what he has done on the field. And um, I, I think it's unfortunate the situation he's in. If it was my vote, he's in the Hall of Fame. I mean, I understand the rules. I do. As now I'm not dismissing the rules. The rules are what they are. But from just a baseball point of view, this man has done everything possible to be in the Hall of Fame. And um, I see sometimes, you know, you turn the blind eye to some things that happens. And sometimes we have to forgive and move on. And uh, this is one of those situations that I, I would love to see him get in the Hall of Fame. So tell baseball fans what you're doing with the New York Mets. Uh, at this point, my official title is um, baseball ambassador for New York Mets. Um, I walk around, see the field, welcome people to the ballpark, talk to them about a little bit about the Mets and try to give them some insight on where the Mets are, where the Mets came from. And I do a little roving. I go around the Mali camps and I instruct a little bit, much of what I did today, much about the outfield play and um, play in the game. Basically just um, be a face and talk to the kids, let them know that there's a, you know, there's a future in this game and it takes determination and commitment. Well, Mookie, it's been a pleasure today. Uh, you are one of the great Mets of all time and a great person as well. Thank you. Thank you.